Again, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves for this celebration, let us recognize before God our sinfulness and ask him for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my thought, through my thought, through my most grievous thought. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon you, beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, in regard to virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord, but I give my opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. So this is what I think best because of the present distress, that it is a good thing for a person to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek a separation. Are you free of a wife? Then do not look for a wife. If you marry, however, you do not sin, nor does an unmarried woman sin if she marries. But such people will experience affliction in their earthly life, and I would like to spare you that. I tell you, brothers, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. Listen, Listen to, to me, me daughter, daughter, see and bend, and bend your, your ear. ear. <clears throat> Hear, O oh daughter, and see, turn your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your Lord, and you must worship him. Listen, Listen to, to me, daughter, daughter see, see and, and bend, bend your ear. ear. All glorious is the king's daughter as she enters. Her raiment is threaded with spun gold. In embroidered apparel she is borne in to the king. Behind her, the virgins of her train are brought to you. Listen, Listen to, to me, me daughter. daughter. See and bend your ear. They are borne in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king, the place of your father's, your sons shall have. You shall make them princes through all the land. Listen, Listen to, to me, daughter. daughter. See, See and bend, and bend your, your ear. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Rising his eyes towards his disciples, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. 
Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you, blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and insult you and denounce you name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward is great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. For our salvation, the Gospel of the Lord. What readings? Sister Carmen was asking me before myself, I wonder what you're going to do with those readings, you know, because it's hard to get them. Well, actually, it's not because, you see, I think we need to just look at the context of it. And the context of the whole of the both readings is our responsorial psalm. The whole responsorial psalm, which is a psalm, which is celebration, it's a bridal celebration, celebration of a woman who is preparing herself to enter into wedding. So she is preparing herself to meet her beloved and be married to him. So that's basically that's the whole context of the whole of both readings, of all the readings. Because again, those of you who are married, those ladies, right, who get ever married, you know how exciting is this time. You know, I've been, I married so many couples, we always see the bride being, right like before the days before the wedding, they are all hyper, all they think about is just the ceremony, the wedding. Nothing else afterwards, so before it's important. It's only that celebration. It's only being perfectly prepared for that celebration. And those of you who will be married later, you know, later on in life, you will probably expect the same thing. But the whole idea is prepare, prepare and also celebrate. So in Paul, in our first reading, is telling us, actually, community of Corinth and us, they're asking him about second coming of Christ. When is going to happen? Because, again, second coming, the, the end of times, start with Jesus' resurrection. So we're all living in end, end times. And Paul is telling them, look, take your life where you are and enjoy it. Do the best with where you are at the moment. So if you're not married, don't look for marriage. Just, you know, be, try to be a be the best person you can be because Christ might come tomorrow. And Paul was basically expecting to Jesus to come back within a couple of years. You know, when that didn't happen, then he kind of adjusted his uh, attitude a little bit and said, well, the Lord will come. Nobody knows when and, and uh, what the time will be. But when he writes to the community, his basic message is very simple. Always be prepared. Always be prepared for the wedding, for the celebration, because the second coming is going to be judgment for all those who deserve it. But for us Christians, the second coming will be wedding feast, will be celebration. The bride, the groom will come. So we, <clears throat> we have to wait with expectations, but also with, you know, rejoicing and not really well wondering about what's be beyond that but to prepare ourselves well for that coming in order so that we look the best and are on our best shape for that day. Like, again, like the bride when she prepares herself for her wedding day. So Paul is telling us, prepare yourself so that you could celebrate already, so that this, you know, waiting for the coming will be already a celebration, will be already this excitement, so that your life can be filled, again, with this excitement, with the joy that you are ready and preparing for the celebration. And that's what Jesus is touching on in our Gospel reading. So the Beatitudes in, in Luke Gospel is a little different than in Matthew, because in Matthew you have eight Beatitudes. In Luke you have four Beatitudes and four curses. So basically it's like Luke kind of adjusts the whole, the whole discourse of Beatitudes. But we need to look at the word, what does it mean to be Beatitudes? What does it mean to be blessed? The word in Greek is makarios. And it could be also translated as happy. That's one of the translations, the probably better translation than blessed. So happy are those who are, but that, 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 that. So we will see who is, who is happy. People who, in a way, they don't put their trust in the world because they have nothing. You know, they have, they lost their, they lost their loved ones. They don't have possessions. They don't have money. They, you know, don't have fame. They are being rejected by others. So they lack for a lot of things. 
Be, and that's why, because they are they supposed to be happy. Why? Because there is plenty of space that they have to let, let God enter in. People, on the other hand, as Luke is writing, you know, those who are rich, those who are satisfied, and so that, those are people who have their hands full. And there is no space for God to enter. That's why they put their trust in possessions, power, importance, you know, fulfill, fulfillment in this life. They have no space and they have no way of being, in a way, preparing themselves for something greater to come. And there is no space for God to enter into celebration. So church is inviting us today to look at our own lives. You know, and I think this time of pandemic is a very good one because you're stuck at home. Okay? You're stuck at home and what you do with that? Let's put it that way. You can make the hell for everybody in the house because you are not happy and you can make your life miserable and everybody else as well. Or you can take this opportunity, and we all can take this opportunity of being with our loved ones in a much you know, more time, having much more time with them, having much more time to connect, to make our relationships better. To, again, to prepare ourselves to kind of allowing ourselves to be happy in the present moment. Not to look on to September 18 when there will, you know, meetings will happen and we'll know what's happened afterwards, or you know, November 3rd, or whatever the date is that we're going to wait for. That's not important. We need to prepare ourselves and make the best out of the moment that we have. As St. Paul is writing, you know, whatever you do, enjoy your life and make the best out of you have today. And church is telling us that's how we're supposed to live our lives. Because we don't know when we, are go when we will be gone. You know, we don't know when we're going to die. We're not, we don't know. We have no control over anything right now in our lives. So it's the best to do with it, to make the best out of what we have. To make sure that people around us can enjoy our company, that we can enjoy others, that we can get to connect a little deeper, a little better. That all comes through making God the center of our lives and opening ourselves to that groom, Christ who will come to us. And he's telling us, prepare yourself for my coming because there will be a big celebration, but you need to be prepared, you need to be ready. So start preparing yourself. Amen. And let us now bring before God our needs and petitions. That the Lord's gracious care will sustain the church in its witness to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the Lord's gracious care will protect the rulers of nations and their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the Lord's gracious care will deliver the poor and the oppressed from suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the Lord's gracious care will help us to know God's will and to do it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the Lord's gracious care will become everlasting life and joy for those who have died, especially Sister Marian Franz and Mario Romero. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty and eternal God, hear the prayers of you people, those spoken out loud and those that remain in the silence of our hearts, and grant them to us because we bring them before you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of mingling of this water and wine, may we become partakers in Christ's divinity, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Amen. Almighty God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts.
Lord, wash us from our sins and cleanse us from our iniquities. Pray now that this our sacrifice may become acceptable to our almighty God. As I said, this sacrifice in my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through you, beloved Son, you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all you creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all you saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop. Remember our servants, your servants, Mario and Marian, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all who have died in your mercy and welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And let us now pray together as Jesus told us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for us protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. And please join us now in praying an act of spiritual communion for all those of you who are at home. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant that you faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go in peace. Have a great day and have a great week.